Hey everybody, I'm Natalia Bonner. Happy Thursday. Okay, it's time for another one of these fun bonus videos. If you haven't seen the other bonus videos that I've been sharing lately with all of this craziness happening in the world, I've been really trying my hardest just to share joy. I know that this can be stressful. Yes, we are taking this very serious and we're practicing social distancing here, doing our part, but since we're all at home, why not have more videos, something to inspire us? Why not practice our machine quilting skills? So I've got three more quilt blocks to share with you today. These three blocks are some of the blocks that I have already shared with you during the stitch along, my block a day stitch along. And now today I'm going to be sharing with you how to dress those up just a little bit. So I hope you can find just a little bit of inspiration from my machine quilting, and hopefully it inspires you to take your machine quilting to a whole new place. Let's get stitching. The first block that I'll be showing you today is a fun variation of block number 15 from my stitch along Let's Stitch a Block a Day with Machine Quilting Rulers, and it's called the Point to Point Curve. Then we'll move on, and the second block that I'm going to be stitching out today, hopefully just creating a little bit of inspiration, is block number 19 from my stitch along, The Ghost Geese. This is a fun variation, adding a couple of different fills using rulers and some free motion quilting. And then the third block that I'm going to be showing you today is also from my stitch along, block number 44, the intertwine block. So on that block, I'm going to be using my rulers, using the straight lines, and I'm also going to be quilting some feathers. So there's a lot of fun, different varieties that I'm going to be sharing with you today. There's going to be swirls, feathers, straight line quilting, and lots of fun with those block designs. I hope you all find a little bit of inspiration. Now let's get to them. This first block that I'm going to be stitching out today is a fun version of block number 15, the point to point curve. So I'll start out by stitching in the ditch all the way around the outside of my block. You know that I love the look of stitch in the ditch. So it's something that most often I'm going to do on my blocks. I just love the way it helps define the blocks from backgrounds or blocks from other sections on blocks. I just love that look. Once I've stitched in the ditch all the way around the outside of the block, then I'm going to adjust my four in one machine quilting ruler. So I'm using the largest curve. Now remember my block is a six inch block. So this ruler fits really, really nicely on there. Whenever I'm machine quilting with rulers, I'm always holding the ruler so that it's a quarter of an inch away from where I want my machine quilting to intersect. So like you can see here, I'm holding it a little bit away and then stitching point to point. Once I've stitched that point to point design, then I'm going to fill in the center of this fun space that I've created here with my favorite swirly feather motif. Now, we do have a link below where you can check out that motif. I have a full tutorial teaching you step by step how to quilt that design out. I also have the pattern step by step available in my book next steps in machine quilting. So make sure you do take a second and check those out. We have those over on our website, peaceandquilt.com. Now, when you are doing machine quilting with rulers, you always want to make sure that you have a ruler foot on your machine. And then you'll also want to have your extended base plate around the bottom, around the throat on your machine. That helps make it so it has that nice stable background there. I do leave my extended base plate on there pretty much all the time when I'm doing custom work, just because I do so much ruler work. So I'll continue stitching out that design. And then once I've completed that one, we'll move on and stitch out another one. I'll start out by using my blue Mark Be Gone marker and a rotary type ruler. I'll find the center of my block horizontally, mark a line there, and then vertically, I'll also find the center and mark a little increment at the top and also on that center line on my block. So this fun block that we're stitching out here today is a fun variation of block number 19, the ghost geese. Once I've marked those marks, I'm ready to begin stitching. I'll start out by stitching the ditch around the outside of the block. When I get over to the side of the block, I'm going to adjust my ruler, stitch along that center line over to the opposite side of the block. From there, I'll stitch an angular line up to the top, then back to where I started. 
I'll travel down the side of the block and then repeat this at the bottom of the block. From there, now I'm going to really start to dress this little block up. So in this background area, I'm going to stitch out my swirls. I love machine quilting swirls. They're one of my favorite fillers. I actually teach you step-by-step -step how to quilt these in my book, Beginner's Guide to Free Motion Quilting. Once I stitch some swirls up to that center point, from there I'm going to go through and now I'm going to stitch some straight point-to-point -point lines in that top flying geese block. Now you can see here I actually had my tension a little bit off and it stitched out a couple of funny stitches there. I decided, you know what, I'm just going to leave them on this quilt. Yep, I'm not perfect. I'm a human that has funny little errors happen sometimes too. Obviously on a client quilt, something like that, I would have gone back through and taken that out and fixed it. From there, I'm going to continue on stitching those swirls in the background in that top portion of the block. Continuing to fill that in, and you can see how I just work my way moving around the outside of the block, over from the side, up to the top, then from the top back down to the bottom. When I get back down to the bottom, I'm going to travel back to that center point and stitch those fun straight line point to point fills in that bottom center section. Now you can pick up or check out the tutorial for this block without any fills, just the foundations. We have links to all of these videos below in the description. All right, let's stitch out one more block. So this fun block that we're stitching out here is a fun variation of block number 44, the intertwine block. So I'm going to start out by stitching in the ditch around the outside of the block. Now you can see here I'm going to adjust and use my mini inside out machine quilting ruler to stitch that angular line point to point across the center of the block. On the mini inside out machine quilting ruler and the inside out machine quilting ruler, I'll line those angular lines on the ruler up with the side of my block then I know I've got a perfect 45 degree angle so once I've stitched the first one I'll travel up the ditch and then stitch another one that intersects through the block from there now I'm going to start to add some fills these fills are going to be straight lines echoing every half an inch so I'll stitch down the ditch and I'll line up my machine quilting ruler so that first marked line on the ruler is right on top of my previous stitch line when I get across the block, then I'll stitch in the ditch, travel across and continue stitching until I filled in that side of the triangle with those straight lines completely. Once I filled in that side of the block, then I'm going to travel along the ditch across the bottom of my block, and I'm going to repeat that same process on the opposite side of the triangle. So now I'm going to fill in again, stitching those lines evenly spaced every half inch, just using the markings on my machine quilting ruler. Once I've stitched all of those angular lines, then I'm going to travel along the ditch up to the top of the block. Once I get up to the top of the block, then I'll stitch in the ditch along the top of the block. Now, 
at that top side, I'm going to start stitching some bump back feathers to fill in that fun open triangle at the top of the block. Now you could add any fill you wanted into there, but I really love the look of feathers. So I'm stitching those back, bump back feathers with the top side of my block as the spine. 